Sugats here for Dollar Shave Club. Thousands of athletes are going for the gold. And as the clear champions of the bathroom, Dollar Shave Club deserves a gold medal. Dollar Shave Club has everything you need to look, smell, and feel your best. Shampoo, body wash, toothpaste, they got it all. And of course, the best razors you'll ever use. You get an amazing, high-quality shave every morning from the DSC Executive Razor Plus. The true gold standard of any morning routine is their Dr. Carver Shave Butter. It helps the razor gently glide across your skin. Dollar Shave Club delivers everything to you. That means no more trips to the store, wandering the aisles, hunting for razors, shampoo, and toothpaste, then playing cashier, scanning and bagging your stuff. Go for the gold. Join Dollar Shave Club today, and for just $5 with free shipping, you'll get the six-blade executive razor plus trial sizes of shave butter, body cleanser, and one wipe Charlie's. Then keep the blades coming for a few bucks more a month. Get yours at dollarshaveclub.com slash Dan. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash Dan. Been on the show several times. Stugatz. Is that uh, B-O-Z? It's B-A-Z. S. Yes. B-A-S. All right. I was, you know, because there's Boz Skaggs. Well, you guys are dragging this thing right into the into the quicksand. Well, why are you <laughs> pronouncing it Boz, though? Right. Probably like Baz or something. Exactly. Like Bass. B-A-S, right? Yeah. Bass rootin'. Boz would connote a Z, right? Right. Yeah. yeah it's, it's like a Scandinavian Yeah, name. like Boz. Like Bosworth. Boss yeah. rootin'. B-O-Z. Yeah. Yeah. Continue. Something about a dog? What was the dog's name? Speedy. Speedy Rootin. This is the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. I do want to talk a little bit more about this idea. Mike Lombardi! What? I, I, uh, that guy. I Mike can't. Mike Lombardi! Jason Kelsey. What? Mike Lombardi! <laughs> now, there, there is a conundrum. Jason Kelsey is a bit of a conundrum because. Mike Lombardi! The words he was saying at the microphone suggest that Jason Mike Kelsey Lombardi. takes himself and his team, Michael and sports Barney. very seriously. <laughs> yeah. However, the costume that he was wearing, which Correct. was <laughs> awesome, <laughs> awesome, yes. uh, did not suggest that Jason Kelsey took Michael sports Barney. seriously. And the thing that I want to talk with you guys about, because our audience is strong, our, strong, our audience is, man, loyal. So, God, we saw some numbers on that mega cast that we did. Crazy. And people were stickier watching what we were doing during the national championship game. The people who were watching were watching for longer than the people who cared about Alabama and Georgia were watching that actual game. The numbers are a little bit crazy. So there is a place for this nonsense. But I would say Stephen A. Smith's sensibilities, aren't they aligned with Will Bunn's? Yes. Yeah. Like how many people on ESPN are you finding that don't? take themselves seriously how many people and throughout the entire network hmm. all the people complaining to the talent office about the crud we do around here to them how many people at espn do you look at and say that is a person on camera who doesn't take himself seriously and is just like he doesn't mind being the court jester the way that stugatz is the court jester or the way that me grading on a curve amid sure. other journalists is the court jester I mean, you're rare from the standpoint, you are a journalist, a great journalist, and you don't take yourself too seriously. There aren't many people I'm trying to think, people at ESPN. But I'm saying that's why you should be thankful for that. It's the reason we get to exist. If everybody was doing it our way, we wouldn't be any kind of special. No, no. We need everyone else to be that self-serious in order for us to stand out not being serious. 100%. I am thankful for that. No, I, I've, but it's, I've been railing around about sports. For 25 years about the idea that you allow me to exist in this in this place where I'm the guy saying, hey, fun and games should be fun and games. Instead of arguing about the Phoenix coach's feelings and whether he was disrespected last night <laughs> because Steve Kerr was doing fun and games like fun and games. JP. Triani. Yeah. Like you guys say, so you guys are okay taking things seriously on the stuff you take seriously, which earlier in the show was defending the respect that the Phoenix coach we couldn't name deserved. <laughs> yeah, but the difference is my taking it seriously doesn't equate to the anger level that you see from Wilbon. Right. I was defending myself. I don't care about the coach. He's entitled to his opinion on the coach. It was disrespectful to me. I don't care about any of that. He can have his opinion on the coach. What I don't understand is why can't I have mine? I can have it with Greg. I can have it with Mike. I can have it with you. I can have it with everyone else on the planet. But Michael Wilbon, think about that. We're talking about sports, Michael. Seriously. Sports. Mm -hmm. You can have it with Tony. You can't have I, it with I me. Know, Reality, but, but not me. Stugatz. I mean, blah, 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 blah. Okay. You do this, Dugats, and you're right. 
I know I am. But you were him 10 years ago. Of course I you was. Were the, like, you were that. You 100%. were sports radio gas bag whose opinion mattered more than Joe on a mobile. You were that. Yeah, I've, I know. And I, I aspired to be that. And but. You, you aspired, yes, you aspired to be everything Michael Wilbon has become. And if you had gotten your way, yeah. you would have become that. No doubt. Maybe <laughs> like, I'm a tad jealous. But right or wrong, if you had gotten your I've way. I've evolved, Dan. I mean, listen, okay? I sit with you every day. My mind, it could be changed. I can have different opinions. I'm actually a better person for it. I am. You have made me a better person. I've told you that a million times because I was always the guy wanting to fire the coach with no information. I don't do it anymore, or at least not as much anymore. Okay? I don't. Okay, hold on. And I'm thankful hold on. to you. Hold on. I, guys, I don't do it as hold much on. anymore. No, you're still a lot person. Yeah, yeah, man. I was on a roll, yeah, though, man. You actually think you weren't a rotten you person? Cheater? You're a liar? Don't do that for one I second. I don't trust you. Run. I don't trust you at all, Sidney. Well, Cody enjoyed getting in there as one of the Kentucky fraud chickens. They they just, it is. It's fun. They won't let me go, man. They just will not allow me to get back to the person I wanted to be. I, just, I have to stay right here. Thank you, guys. Because <laughs> you want it. You you, you want to demand respect? You do. Ultimately, your anger right now is about you want to be the guy who demands more respect. And frankly, you were disrespected. I'm not disputing that. I just want to be able to have a conversation without being disrespected. That's all. I re I was respectful of him and his opinion on our well, show. I know, but Stugatz, that's why the army loves you. That's why the army is behind you. That's why there is a Stugatz army. Um, <laughs> and furthermore. I would say that one of the funny things that's happened here is I just I really don't think there are a whole lot of people siding with with Will Bond mm -hmm. on this one. Well, well they might no, they might agree with Michael's opinion on it. In fact, many people on my mentions do. They don't agree with how Michael went about having that discussion. I know, but just... I would say that largely, don't you think this particular disconnect is the reason you get to be popular, Stu Gatz, is because you are a voice for the people. I marveled yesterday. We were talking about a truly despicable act. <laughs> Stu Gott went on the radio Again. and said he was giving a hundred dollars <laughs> per goal to the Florida Panthers charity, did a, an assortment of interviews talking about his charitable work and then never gave the money. And it became a despicable, charming act. The moment Stu Gott said, but it felt good to not feel like a rotten person. <laughs> it felt good to get the applause for being a good charitable person. I know there's no way to actually get that applause. And he hadn't considered the one option, which is do genuine charitable work. Yeah. He's saying the only way for me to get that applause is through fraud. Yes. I got caught up in the emotion of the whole thing and put something out there I probably shouldn't have. But it did feel good, man. I mean, everyone. Everyone applauding your charitable efforts. Yeah. You were a good Every person. Every local news outlet wanted me on. Look what this guy is doing. <laughs> oh, great. That's the best of both worlds where you appear to be charitable without actually being charitable. Uh, genius. Uh, Gar uh, Guillermo, put it on the poll. Is that the best of both worlds? <laughs> <laughs> the best being where, 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 I would say the best would be to actually be charitable. No, no, now you see into the soul of both Cody and Stugat. How do I turn any charitable effort into maximum exposure and glory for me? Stugat wants a new boat. Right. Time for some more ads. Guillermo, put it on the poll. Is that the best of both worlds, appearing to be charitable while not actually contributing to charity? I'm not certain Greg realizes how perfect that was. I, I don't think Greg realizes what charity is supposed to be. That's the he doesn't understand the idea of helping others. It's the thought that matters. No, no it's Greg is about helping you know. Greg. So the best way to do it was to not actually be charitable, just get the credit for being charitable. Right. Best exactly. of both worlds. That is my every Tuesday, people. Hi, everyone. Stu Gatz here. Support for the Dan Levitard Show podcast comes from our friends at Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Chances are you are confident when it comes to your work, your hobbies, and your life. Rocket Mortgage gives you the same level of confidence when it comes to buying a home or refinancing your existing home loan. Rocket Mortgage is simple, allowing you to fully understand all the details and be confident you are getting the right mortgage for you. To get started, go to rocketmortgage.com slash Stugatz. That's rocketmortgage.com slash Stugatz, S-T-U-G-O-T-Z, equal housing lender, licensed in all 50 states, NMLSconsumeraccess.org number 3030.
Don Lebatard. I love me some doctors. Have a lot of respect for the medical profession. Stugats. Except chiropractors. This is the Don Lebatard Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. Greg Cody of the Miami Herald in with us today. We will have a back in my day from him in minutes. Minutes. In this segment, you yeah. will get a Greg Cody back in my day. But have you guys seen what is happening here with Markel Fultz? The number one overall pick. None of us had ever heard of him before last year. It was weird. He comes out of nowhere because his team at Washington had had won nine games. Right. And so people weren't watching those games, and people didn't know how good this person was. And then he becomes the number one overall pick over Lonzo Ball, and he seems to have short-circuited. He seems to have some sort of mental hiccup or a shoulder injury that doesn't allow him to shoot straight. And... This guy for the Philly Voice, Kyle Newbeck, spent six months talking to Sixers staffers, people who diagnosed faults, people close to him. He says he found a lot of contradiction, a lot of secrecy, a lot of fingers pointed in every direction. Here's something else that he found. Virtual reality goggles to help him visualize making basketball plays. Whoa. Hmm. Now, that sounds like gobbledygook, right? All of you are like, what, what is that? I don't know the science behind that. I don't know what they're doing. I'm not going to dismiss the methods just because I'm ignorant about the methods. But, man, that's not something you want around your number one overall pick who's having trouble shooting. If he wants to do that as part of his training and is having success or is struggling even, I get it. But this guy is short-circuited, Stugatz. Wow, 33% from the field. Right. Yeah, you want that guy to come out of college and just be able to shoot. <laughs> no, but they're so young. How glasses. old is he, Mike? How old? Oh, I is think he's Ma- nineteen or twenty, <clears throat> Dan. I mean, I just uh, getting to the league so young, and we were spoiled by LeBron. LeBron gets to the league and looks like a man already. Markel Fultz is basically this is something that should have been happening for him in college. He's nineteen, but like, let's be careful. Me saying let's be careful because that's a big gulf between hey, my shoulder hurts and maybe he's short circuiting. Like maybe the shoulder. Oh, jo- I, I know, right? but his shot doesn't look right. Oh yes, no, it, it, it looks it, awful. It, no, yes. it might just be the shoulder. Right. It might not be a mental short-circuiting. He might not be physically right. But when you're dealing with virtual reality basketball plays, that sounds like a mental solution. Mm-hmm. That does not sound like his shoulder hurts when that's some of the training that they're doing. Well, it could also be because his shoulder hurts and he can't make the plays on an actual court. Virtual reality might be able to help with that. I understand maybe coming from your perspective, but VR is commonplace now in all sorts of sports, in the NFL too. This is right. Mike is right. This is a Sixers decision. Actually, they use this with other players. They've used it with Joel Embiid. Mm-hmm. Ryan Colangelo is a big proponent mm-hmm. of it. So. I know, but what I'm saying is because you've got a guy who seems to be at this point 19 and mentally frail, doing it with him becomes different. Yes, that's good context to have that they've mm-hmm. been doing it with everybody. But the idea that this person can't figure out his way—it's such a hard thing. It's such a big ask. You've noticed that these people physically don't look right, right? Physically, Markel Fultz and Lonzo Ball, they do not look as mature no. as the people they're playing against. Right. It's like it's like seeing sixth graders out there. In some respect, when you look at Bam, when you look at the guy for the Heat whose name I always have trouble with, Adebayo, when you look at Good him, save. thank you, when you look at him, you see a fully formed 20-year-old physically who might even get bigger but belongs among men. Physically, he looks like he belongs. You're right. Fultz and, and Lonzo Ball are two guys, not saying that they won't, not saying they won't be great, uh, but physically they look like right now, and maybe because it's they're 19 years old, they look, they like, look like they don't belong. I, I looked at a two-round NBA mock draft, 60 players, zero college seniors, two juniors. They're drafting babies. Right, Like ben, but Ben Simmons is also a baby. He looks like he belongs right now. Yes. You know? It's funny because this year, like, a lot of hinky supporters are, are – Taking a victory lap, saying, that's how you do tanking. See, the plan worked, but let's see, examine what he got out of it. Okafer, no longer there, right? That was a disaster. Fultz, this is going to be a disaster, it looks oh, like. But no, the, Simmons missed his first year. Embiid been plagued by injuries. But Mike, you hit on Simmons and Embiid, and you got it. Well, I mean, it's not it. even... Well, he missed an entire year. Don't forget that. The thing about the process, though, that is funny is the process is simply just keep drafting a quarterback till you get one. Correct. Use all your picks. Like, the process is increase the margin for error space that you can totally whiff on 
on Fultz and Okafor, this is the process. You could totally whiff, but you have so many of those picks that you're going to get it right at some point on Embiid and Simmons, but they haven't gotten it right yet. What Mike's saying about the well, injuries is right. I mean, but Mike, the guys that they got it right on have missed seasons. A lot of time. But now they're done, and that's the key point. Mike, it's a great point because they're done. Because the team will never be bad enough again as long as Embiid and Simmons are healthy for but, them to keep picking the quarterback. But, but if they're not healthy, you can't have the hinky victory lap. Because those Okafer, right now, Okafer and Fultz look like intergalactic misses. Yes. Like, they're as bad as anything you've ever seen drafted that high. Bennett from Cleveland. Mm -hmm. No, but I'm saying, like, in that yes. conversation, right now, Fultz is in that conversation with Bennett. And, and with Fultz, it doesn't sound like an age thing or an injury thing when you're going to virtual reality. It just sounds like a psychological issue. But 33%? That they're doing it with everybody, though. I, I, that they're I think doing sometime, it with everybody on their team. Well, I mean, the NBA is doing it, too. You, you might be showing your age a little bit by correlating VR with it being... You, you know, were very gentle of... with that earlier when you said, I could see how you would see that from your perspective, from the nursing home. You were very gentle with that. 33%? <laughs> mm -hmm. That's right. You keep That's saying abnormal. that. That's yeah. That is correct. That's abnormal. That's like a but golf... Like two games. That's that's no. like a golfer who has the yips. No, but don't do it on he's he he's not right. Like he's in practice he's missing stuff. His shot doesn't look right. Like that's not even a lot of games he's played. Whatever 33% you're putting out there, he's not ready to be on an NBA basketball court. I've seen several Fultz shot form videos on my timeline. None of them are the same. And it all has a hitch. Yeah. That's the only consistency in it. All right, I lied to you. Greg Cody's back in my day and Chris Sims next. Don Lebatard. You want me to get real? Stugats. I'll get real. This is the Don Lebatard show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. Greg Cody of the Miami Herald in with us today. His back in my day will be in minutes, but first we go to Chris Sims of Bleacher Report. Chris Sims has been nice enough. Are you outraged that Kevin and Bean got Jack White on their show? I mean, a Zippy and the Juice should have gotten it. <laughs> it is a world famous K Rock. Is that a fine? That's a fine. Yeah, it is. The world famous K Rock. That yeah, go a ahead. Fine, That's yeah. a two dollar music <laughs> snob. Two dollars. Uh, Chris Sims, number twenty six. Uh, we've got since Nick Foles at thirty three. Since Eli Manning at thirty eight is where I should start. Eli Manning was thirty eight. Geno Smith ahead of him, thirty seven. <laughs> Colt, Colt McCoy ahead of Eli Manning. Brett Hundley ahead of Eli Manning. AJ McCarron, Nick Foles, Carson Palmer ahead of Eli Manning. Woof. Woof. Yeah. Woof on your Carson Palmer assessment. <laughs> the next Sims. one ain't great either. Number 31, Jay Cutler, <laughs> Patrick Mahomes at 30, Josh McCown, 28, Jacoby Brissett, 27, Ryan Tannehill. And number 26, according to Chris Sims of Bleacher Report, the 26th best quarterback in the universe is... Tyrod Taylor, Buffalo Bills. All right. Wow. Wow. All right, we're getting to some... Uh, you got now, it better than Tannehill. Now we're getting that. to some rankings. Yeah, but only because Tannehill's we're hurt. Yeah. yeah, that's right. It is. I think if T Tannehill was completely healthy, he would be above a Tyrod Taylor. It's going to get real interesting. I don't know. Late next week, when we start to get into my top 20, guys, I think that's when we'll start to have some, Dal some good Dal conversations. Dalton is about. not going to be on this list. This is becoming don't clear to me. Don't this say it. Don't say it. No, you don't have to say anything. But Dalton isn't anywhere on the 71 and shouldn't be. I'm with you. Like And, and shouldn't be. <laughs> so we'll get back to that at a later date, Chris. Thank you for being on with us. We'll talk to you tomorrow. All right, guys. Have a good one. See ya. <laughs> Bleach your report. Check him out. Give him some clicks. That You don't have to actually listen to it. Just, Just give him it. some clicks. Yeah, him and left go. Time now for Greg Cody's Back in My Day. And now it is time to take a trip down memory lane. Here's your guy, Greg Cody, with Back in My Day. Strange signs. I can't drive 10 minutes without seeing something on somebody else's car that makes me go, hmm, like CNC Music Factory. I don't get the combative, <laughs> retaliatory nature of signs. There are stick figure signs that depict the makeup of your family. You know, dad, mom, two kids, a dog. And so there arose signs in which some Freddy Krueger character is chasing your stick family with a chainsaw. There are my kid made the honor roll signs, and so somebody dreamed up the my pit bull is smarter than your honor roll student bumper sticker. Seriously? Let me ask your pit bull the answer to this question. What is 14 plus 3? When he tells me, then you've got an argument. <laughs> I also don't get those yellow triangular baby on board rear window signs. I'm thinking of retaliating with a sign for people driving with a beautiful woman that reads baby on board. I mean, what's the point? The message. Don't get me wrong. 
I'm a new grandpa. Of course I'm going to be careful driving behind a kid in a car seat. But that suggests I'm going to feel free to veer and careen recklessly in traffic unless there's a baby to bring me to my senses. It's the same with those neighborhood yard signs I'm seeing lately that say something like, Drive like your children live here. How about I drive like I value all lives equally and apply my brakes for a 64-year-old woman almost as if she were a precious child? One other sign that mystifies me is the large rear window RIP decal mourning the passing of your loved one, sort of a headstone on wheels. Don't get me wrong. I am sorry for your loss. It's just that back in my day, mourning was sort of a personal and private thing, not something we publicized at 70 miles an hour. (laughs) 99.99% of people driving behind you and seeing that decal do not know you and did not know you're dearly departed. It's just weird to me broadcasting something so intensely personal for public consumption. It'd be like me flying a bumper sticker that read, Honk if you have shy bladder syndrome like me. Folks, maybe it's fomented by the social media age, but... Please do not share so much personal information. Love your baby on board. Be proud of your honor roll student. (laughs) Mourn your lost loved one. Just don't feel the need to shout it into a megaphone. Keep your emotions, sorrow, and pride unhealthily cloistered and pent up like I do. I'm Greg Cody, (laughs) and that's how it was back in my day. Yeah, Yeah. Guillermo put it on the poll. Did he have to look up CNC Music Factory? (laughs) Put it on the poll at Levitard Show because he not only went musty reference, he went musty reference that I'm certain he had to look up. (laughs) There's no way that he remembered that things that make you go, hmm, was CNC Music Factory. You want me to answer that? I know the answer to that. You we already know the answer, you don't need the, you know, you don't, you didn't, you didn't know it off the top of your head. We update the polls next. Hello. I'd like to deposit this to checking. Fate is a fickle master. What? The future is uncertain. Okay. And what's my account balance? Ah, the horizon is cloudy. I see a long, treacherous voyage Um, filled with great peril. Look, can I just get a deposit slip or something? A fortune bank teller. Surprising. What's not surprising? How much you could save by switching to GEICO. I see a yellow-eyed serpent and a low APR. GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Don Lebertard. That guy's an idiot. He's not smart at life. He's not smart at books. He's not smart at people. He's not smart at interesting radio. He's not smart. But that person has listened to the show every day for the last six years. Should stop now. Stugatz. I wonder, though, if it's on us. Not on us. We're great. (laughs) Awesome. Ah. Best hour ever. Yes! yes it's yes, been our ever. best hour in best six hour. years. Yes. Best hour. Double metal fingers to you, best idiot hour. moron, Jacko! <laughs> Woo! That hour just won a Marconi. What do you think of that? I don't even know what a Marconi is. <laughs> really? <laughs> you ruined it. We had a flow going. We had it going. That guy's Pasta, right. right? This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. Texter writes in, I usually re-listen to the show every day, but my God, was today a stinker. Guillermo put it on the poll. Was today a stinker <laughs> at Lebatard Show? Let me explain something to you. At the risk of becoming a gas bag, sports media gas bag, overinflated in self-importance. I will grant you that we did a cruddy show today. I will make that admission publicly. I will ask your forgiveness, but I will remind you, it's better than the one you would have done. (laughs) (laughs) Bang! If you got these microphones, you would not do something as good as what we did today. And by God, we stunk today. (laughs) But what you would do in fact, I'm going to allow it one day around here where I don't have to do my job at all and just bring someone else in here to do the show who thinks they could do it better than we do while complaining about their free content on the Internet. It's called they curring get... it. Letting others do your job for you. Yes. S- Steve curring it. Yep. What a strange issue to consume our show. I'm consumed, it really man. Is. It was weird. It, I mean, it tells you how slow a day it was today. <laughs> Steve Kerr allowed his players to call plays. We talked about it for three hours. I care so little about this. I don't even care. That's so true. <laughs> I don't even care. Whatever. Who? Di- what difference does it make? Who calls the plays for that team? What I, difference does it make? I don't know. Suns didn't have a problem with it. I guess it's okay. Uh, the Suns had a problem with it. Just I don't want to revisit the whole thing, man. I don't even care either. I just care what Will Bond did to me. 
<laughs> it's just what a weird. Normally, we don't do one topic shows. What a weird thing to just really eat was. our show today. Weird. Tomorrow, it's I mean, all Winter Olympics. Honestly, <laughs> Guillermo, who could I put in charge of the plays for the Warriors where you'd say, well, that's not going to go well? Honestly, I'm dead serious. I could have, I could get professional clowns to do it. I could get a lawn ornament to, <laughs> to just project yeah. my lasers through its eyes. What, uh, what difference does it make who's calling the plays for the Warriors? Swaggy P? Anybody. There's mm. nobody. Because Swaggy P would always call his own number. It would, they'd still win because everybody was trying to guard everyone else. But well, the reason they win is because guys who are not Swaggy P are taking all the shots. <laughs> He's just taking some. <laughs> That's right. Um, I wish JP, the Suns coach, was mad at Steve Kerr. Then we'd really have yeah. something today. It's his fault. Mm-hmm. I mean, blame can him. you imagine if he were mad? Oh, we'd probably do an entire show on it. And he is mad. I mean, he yeah, is. Really. The only ones mad are you and Will Bond. I'm mad at Wilbon. I'm not mad at Kerr, JP, or anyone. No, Cody thinks it was disrespectful, but was. Cody, uh, but Cody is not mad at anybody. No, you're I'm not mad. angry. I mean, I got to be honest. I woke up. I was mad at Steve Kerr, and now my anger has shifted to Michael. That's Wilbon. good. <laughs> That's good that you're just an anger dispenser. <laughs> you're you're not rage against the machine. You're a rage machine. <laughs> Uh, go ahead and update the polls at Levitard Show. The Twitter poll is brought to you by J.C. Penny. There's more to love at J.C. Penny this Valentine's Day. Come in and find great gifts at sweet prices only at J.C. Penny. I didn't update all the polls yesterday. I have one left. Is Arch Schleister going to kill Frank Reich? <laughs> it's a good question. We did a better show yesterday. Yes, we did. <laughs> Don't take that the wrong way, Greg. Eighty-three <laughs> percent of the audience said yes. We did do a better show yesterday. It was certainly more varied. Yes. We got eaten by one topic. Yeah, I got eaten by Will Bond. I mean, he just destroyed me. I mean, he chewed me up and he spit me out. I have the uh, topics that we went over yesterday. This was a varied show: bipolar disorder and ensuing self-medication, Dwayne Wade's mortality, Jenny Rivera's plane crash. The Goldman's depressing existence of having to hunt down every <laughs> cent from the man a civil court found responsible for their son's murder. Mm-hmm. Esteban Luiz's slippery slope of self-destruction. Mm-hmm. The street value of heroin and cocaine. Mm-hmm. And Sammy Sosa's identity crisis. Several <laughs> times yesterday I told you it's the single most depressing show we've ever done. And yet somehow this one's been more depressing. No, you're so wrong about this. You guys are forgetting <laughs> the idea of do you poop naked. Oh, yeah. There was, there was all sorts of fun had yesterday that Damn. you guys are forgetting. <laughs> Can you name the coach of the Suns? 93% of the audience said no. What's more disrespectful to Jay Triano? That's the coach of the Suns, by the way. JP. Steve Kerr letting the players coach or Greg Cody not getting his name right? 67% of the audience said Cody not getting his name right. Triano, right? (laughs) Is it okay to disrespect the Hawks? 90% 90% of the audience <laughs> said yes. <laughs> that's that's what we were saying. We were saying Steve Kerr could have done it against the Hawks and nobody would have uh, had any problem with it because it's okay to disrespect them. Is it okay to do it to Budenholzer? 68% of the audience said yes. Does the world need more goose gossages? 59% of the audience said yes. Do you think Lane Johnson and Teddy Bruschi define fun differently? <laughs> Did you say 98% was our record? Yeah, from last really? week. Really? Uh, it's that high? No, it was close, though. 97% of the audience said oh. yes. 97 yeah. That is this. Lane Johnson and Teddy Bruschi have a different definition for what's fun. <laughs> is appearing to be charitable while not actually contributing to charity the best of both worlds? I did that. Oh. And Greg Cody endorsed it. I know he Greg did. Greg Cody I endorsed it by yeah. saying that the best of both worlds is, is appearing to be charitable instead of actually being charitable. Well, 68% of the audience also endorses it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Did Greg have to look up C&C Music Factory? 94% of the audience said yes. And then we have, uh, was today a stinker? 
Oh, wow, a lot of votes already. That was quick. <laughs> I mean, you guys, well, we were waiting for that question all day. Yes, is the answer. Our audience is <laughs> weird. Our audience is weird because uh, they will arrive places quickly. Mike, what are we doing with this skills competition? Have we decided that we're going to do something on the Internet with the skills competition where we're going to do a show around the basketball skills competition? We'll have an announcement on that uh, shortly. Right. And I'm sorry. My apologies. I left the poll question out. How the sun's doing? Mm. That's right. There was no real answer for that. Yeah. Um, so when would it be, though? Saturday? This Saturday, if we were doing it? If we're doing it, when we have our announcement shortly. Okay, well, do we want Greg Cody to be a part of it? He does not want to be a part of this really? hypothetical thing. First one went so well, why not? Why don't you try to get Eisner?